Hello, hello, terrific Tuesday to you. I'm Coy, grateful to be spending part of my day right here with you on CNN 10. Today is the first Tuesday in November, and that means election day across America. Millions of Americans head to the polls to cast their ballots, but they won't be choosing the next U.S. president. Americans will cast their votes for representatives in Congress and candidates for state and local offices. Every two years, all 435 seats in the House of Representatives are up for election, while only about a third of the 100-seat Senate are up for grabs. These are called midterm elections because they happen two years into a U.S. president's four-year term. The midterms are the first chance for voters to weigh in on President Biden's term, policies, and vision for America. All eyes are on Arizona, Wisconsin, Georgia, and Pennsylvania, four states that President Biden flipped to Democrat in the 2020 election but are now battleground states that Republicans could win back. Issues at the top of mind for voters are the economy, social issues, immigration, concerns about violent crime, and concerns about election security and the election process itself. This year, early voting has surged in some key states, including Georgia, which shattered records for early voter turnout. But rain forecasted across the country today could impact voter turnout on Election Day. We'll hear more now from CNN's Karen Kaifa about today's elections and what Americans might expect as results come in. President Joe Biden isn't on the ballot, but for most Americans, it's their first chance to weigh in on his party and policies. This election isn't a referendum, it's a choice. It's a choice between two fundamentally different visions of America. Among states taking center stage in the battle for the U.S. Senate, tight races in four that President Biden flipped in the 2020 presidential election. Arizona, Wisconsin, Georgia, and Pennsylvania, where Biden and former President Barack Obama stumped Saturday. Democracy itself is on the ballot. The stakes are high. And former President Donald Trump also rallied. This election is your chance to make your voice heard. Underscoring how 2022 may foreshadow the 2024 presidential contest. Polls indicate most voters are looking at the economy right now as they cast ballots. Democrats touted Friday's October jobs report and unemployment still near a half century low as a sign their economic policies are working, while Republicans point to the highest inflation in 40 years. The inflation crushing our, 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 our pocketbooks. Can't fill up our tank, can't, can't fill up our uh, grocery cart. Democrats hope the Supreme Court's decision to overturn Roe v. Wade in June will motivate voters, especially women, while Republicans have accused Democrats of being weak on crime, especially in major cities. Both parties eager to drive turnout in their favor. 10 second trivia. Name the peninsula in Egypt located between the Mediterranean Sea and Red Sea. Sinai, Iberian, Arabian, or Yucatan. Sinai Peninsula is the answer here, and at the southern tip is where you'll find the Egyptian city of Sharm El Sheikh. This week and next in Sharm El Sheikh, Egypt, tens of thousands of world leaders, representatives, negotiators, businesses, and citizens will gather for the COP27 conference. 27 because this is the 27th year that the Global Climate Summit has been held. The focus of these conferences is climate change. The UN says this was a fringe issue when the summits began, but it's now a global priority, though different nations have different levels of commitment to it. Carbon dioxide emissions are front and center here. Most scientists say these emissions are harming the global environment by causing Earth's average temperatures to rise. A smaller group of scientists says that climate change happens naturally and that the Earth can absorb human carbon emissions. But the goal of these UN summits is for member countries to lay out new plans to reduce their emissions of carbon dioxide. Let's take a look now at the history of these COP conferences as nations continue to debate the issues that relate to the health of the planet. COP stands for Conference of the Parties. The gatherings are intense technical negotiations brokered by the UN. Countries are meant to work together to coordinate a global effort to reach net zero greenhouse gas emissions by 2050. But progress at successive COP summits has been limited. This is a very long process, we take decades. We will go forward and join consensus in this today. Now must be our moment for action. The first climate COP summit took place in Berlin in 1995, and representatives from more than 170 states or territories attended. Two years later, progress. 
the parties at COP3 in Japan agreed to the Kyoto Protocol, in which 37 industrialized states or territories were legally bound to start reducing their emissions. But the biggest polluter at the time, the United States, refused to ratify the agreement because it didn't oblige developing nations like China to cut emissions. In the following years, climate change slipped on and off the global agenda. After 9-11, the world's attention shifted to fighting international terrorism. Climate issues took a back seat. All the while, greenhouse gas emissions continued to soar. And without the United States and China on board, the Kyoto Protocol began to crumble. Successive climate summits produced few results. COP15 in Copenhagen in 2009 was highly anticipated, but fell short. It's not acceptable. It's definitely not acceptable. It's disappointing. Then, at COP21 in Paris, there was a breakthrough. In 2015, the Paris Agreement was adopted by more than 190 parties, including the US and China, and effectively replaced Kyoto. Its ambition was to limit global warming to well below 2, but preferably 1.5 degrees Celsius above pre-industrial levels. But the watchdog, Climate Action Tracker, shows that all major economies are off track to meeting their obligations to contain temperature rise. And as governments lagged in fulfilling their pledges, a new wave of youth-led environmental activism was born. All you can talk about is money and fairy tales of eternal economic growth. How dare you? It is time to put Youngstown, Ohio, Detroit, Michigan, and Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, before Paris, France. Then US President Donald Trump withdrew the United States from the Paris Agreement, only for his successor, President Biden, to bring the US back into it. This moment demands urgency. Good ideas and good intentions aren't good enough. At COP26 in Glasgow, developed countries pledged $100 billion annually to support developing countries in reducing greenhouse gas emissions and adapting their economies. But the conference also had its shortcomings. India successfully demanded that the final agreement would commit countries to phase down rather than phase out coal. It's according to science, sir. It's according to science. No, no not, not at all. Fossil fuels like coal, oil and gas emit heat-trapping greenhouse gas emissions. And if we don't cut those emissions dramatically, scientists predict global temperatures could warm by 3 degrees by the end of the century. Now for today's 10 out of 10, we're bringing you a tasty story that's gonna wake you up. People deep fry chicken, they deep fry potatoes, I've even heard of deep fried Oreos. But coffee? How do you even do that? James Hoffman, a coffee connoisseur and author, deep fried the coffee beans for 14 and a half minutes. And he says it created a soft and buttery cup of joe, rich but not greasy. I guess you could uh, deep fry just about anything. I think my weakness is French fries. I could eat them all day, every day. What's your weakness? Like, if you were a superhero, what would your kryptonite be? Let me know at Koi Wire on Instagram, Snapchat, and TikTok. Shout out time now. Manny High School in Manny, Louisiana. We wish you and everyone watching around the world many blessings. My team and I are so grateful to spend part of our day with you. I'm Koi. This is CNN 10.